Welcome to Antiques at Midnight. Tonight we're going to talk about religious relics. The history of religious relics is very, very long and involved. It would take years to master it. So tonight we're just going to get a little tiny snippet of it. So tonight we're going to concentrate on the history of relics from the Middle Ages uh, to the current day. But the history of relics goes back way, way, way back to ancient times. We can see depictions of it on pottery in ancient Greece. You can see um, artwork with rituals using relics going back again to the ancient times. Um, but tonight we're going to focus on the history of the Catholic Church and the use of relics and um, the time period beginning about the Middle Ages. The pieces we're going to look at are from the early 1900s. We'll take a look at those in just a few seconds. As far as Christian relics are concerned, we can see references to them made in the Old Testament or the Bible. And there is a long history associated with these beginning in ancient times, again, when martyrs died, they were buried um, or placed in catacombs. Eventually, buildings were erected over these uh, relics and people would take pilgrimages to go visit these uh, martyrs or saints' burial places. And of course, with people going on these pilgrimages, all kinds of stories started to spread about different miracles happening at these different sites and as more and more people wanted to visit these sites to either partake or ask for or, or, or witness um, these miracles, it started to become more and more of, a, of an economical thing as much as it was a religious um, thing to the, to the towns and to the places where these relics were held, were kept. During the Middle Ages, traveling to these places uh, to, to see the relics became such a booming business that many of the towns um, were competing to get relics of, of saints and martyrs to their churches and to their locations so people would come and visit there. And the, the, um, the economic benefit was not just to the churches, but it was also to the hotels, or I should say taverns or inns, um, and to, to all the businesses along the way where people were stopping and needing to eat and sleep and purchase things. Um, so it was really kind of a booming um, business, and it was really encouraged by not only the church, but also by merchants and uh, nobles and anyone who was benefiting from all of this. So uh, during this time, Christians believed that venerating relics um, would help them gain favor with the saints. And since the saints had a direct line to God, um, they could, you know, ask for um, things like to be healed or for success in some venture or whatever else they needed. So again, um, this just became a, a really big business uh, and part of the part of the real economy of the towns that were lucky enough to be able to get relics um, to their locations uh, and to have people associate that particular saint or martyr with their locale. In addition to visiting the relics, uh, eventually it became pretty big business to be able to purchase tiny pieces of relics uh, yourself. And of course, anytime there's money to be made off of such a, such a booming industry, suddenly all these relics started appearing, all kinds of relics that, you know, have now been debunked as not being real. Um, and there, you know, some churches claim to have the original wood from Jesus's cross. And at some point they had done a calculation and, and realized that there was so much wood 
in different churches claiming to be Jesus's cross that they could actually build a ship with it. Um, so a lot of the relics we see probably aren't real um, and it's really hard to distinguish from what would be real and what wouldn't be real. Uh, the Catholic Church basically breaks the relics down into three categories. We have the first class relic which is anything that has to do with Jesus or Jesus's life um, and uh, also um, the physical bones physical remains you know bones and that type of thing of saints and martyrs those are all considered first class uh, relics second class relics are items that saints might have used frequently such as rosaries um, or a crucifix or something like that and then third class relics are things objects that have come in contact with either first or second class relics so um, eventually the catholic church passed um, rules that said you cannot sell or buy first or second class uh, relics but you could still purchase third class relics and um, we're going to take a little bit closer look now at our relics here all right we have four relics and four reliquaries and of course a reliquary is uh, as you can see something that holds relics right so um, they can be pretty simple they can be plain they could be really uh, elaborately ornate uh, these these are all small to medium sized ones the they sometimes are gigantic um, they can be made of precious metal gold silver uh, jeweled um, or they could be a little bit more modest like the ones that we have uh, these are a little bit more common now a lot of times people will see these in like a jewelry box or something and they won't realize that it's an actual um, relic they just think it's you know some little thing but I'll show you up close. So this one is um, St. Bernadette. This one is, I don't think the case on this one is silver. It looks like this one is um, clothing. So this is probably a, you know, probably a third class um, relic. A lot of times these will be sealed in the back. All of these are sealed and I can't open them except for one, which I'll show you. Um, but I have, we haven't opened the inside, so we can't see if it still has its wax seal. Um, so if these are undisturbed, when you open the back of them, like for example, I'll show you the back of the, the St. Bernadette one. If you open up the back of this, now this is sealed, so you can't really open it up, but if you open it up, there should be a wax seal under here. But again, this one really can't be opened up, so I'm not gonna disturb it. Um, this one here, we're going to show you because you can see this one is um, St. Francis, St. Francis. And when you turn this one around to the back, you can see it, we've opened it up and there's a secondary reliquary. So even this one in here is another reliquary. And this one, you can, I won't pull it out, but it comes out. You can also wear it as a pendant like the Bernadette one. And this one is 800 silver. So the in, inside part of this, all of this filigree work, that's all um, 800 silver. So a little bit nicer. And so the ones in these reliqui bigger reliquaries are all the same. They're all a smaller reliquary that's um, 800 silver. That one again is nice, has a nice fancy uh, base to it. This one here, is Saint Teresa, Saint Teresa, and you can see the reliquary inside there is also the same. It's probably 800 silver, looks like some um, garnets or maybe rubies. The outside of this has rhinestones, so the inside is actually better quality than the outside, right? But it's pretty, it's got the, um, prob probably Saint Teresa right there. And this one, again, this one is screwed um, nice and tight, so we're not gonna open it up. But again, when you open these up, if you can get inside the inner layer, they should have a red um, wax seal. I'm not really sure what the relic in there is. It could be a tiny 
piece of bone. It could be a piece of wood. It, I, I don't really know. It's hard to tell what what's actually in there. This one is um, St. Margaret. And again, same thing. This one, somebody, I think, um, glued this one nice and tight because they didn't want people opening it up. So <laughs> that one we definitely couldn't get into. And these range from price. You can go on um, eBay and and see um, they range in price they basically depends on the um, who the saint is if there's documentation a lot of these come with certificates um, if you do have the documentation it's better if you don't what can you do you can only take things as you find them um, it depends on the reliquary how fancy the, the reliquary is so this these this group here i would say the smallest one the saint bernadette one is probably in the 200 to 250 range the bigger one with saint Teresa, because it's got the the saint Teresa statue that one's probably going to be in the more to three three to four hundred dollar range and the other two probably in that same two to four hundred dollar um, window again part of it depends on how desirable the saint is and um, just like everything else some are more popular than others right so that's our um, our episode for tonight a little look at the history of uh, reliquaries just a little brief readers digest version of it again there have been many many um, books written thousands of pages of history regarding um, these fun relics and now if you're going through a vintage jewelry box somewhere and you see one of these you'll know what it is all right so i'll see you at the next episode bye bye now